I got bad news for a lot of marketers. Um, fresh off the press, not really. This is a couple weeks ago. Google says it classifies AI-generated content as spam. Straight from John Mueller, uh, the new Matt Cuts. Um, Mueller says GPT-3 and other content generators are not considered quality content, no matter how convincingly human they are. And I gotta be honest with you, that kind of makes sense to me. Like, it, it I, I'm not saying it's not annoying, especially if you've gotten used to using some of those tools that are out there that are super handy dandy. Um, but you would have to forgive Google for drawing this line in the sand. As a matter of fact, I, I call it an obvious line. GPT-3, by the way, if you're not familiar, it's the thing that everybody's using. It's like an, and I don't really know what it is. It's, uh, it's an open source AI utility that anybody has access to, I guess. Um, <laughs> that was the idiot's way of explaining it. Uh, what is it? Uh, generative pre-trained transformer three is an auto, auto regressive language model that uses deep learning to produce human like text. Thank you. I know nothing more than I knew a moment ago. Uh, here's why it's relevant for us, the ads people, because there are a ton of tools that will create your ad copy on your behalf. And Google is um, algorithmically consistent in many instances. So, you know, an example of that would be that we can see Google using the same site crawling tools that it uses in Search Console inside of your DSA campaign. So it stands to reason, as far as I'm concerned, that if Google's going to go around penalizing AI generated text, I'd be really careful with AI generated ad copy. And you might ask like, well, how would they know? And my answer is, I don't know. How would they know otherwise? You know, Mueller is saying no matter how convincing it is, this is a trillion dollar AI mechanism we're talking about. I think its ability to recognize AI is probably better than anybody else's. Um, uh, I think that, and this comes from Patience, who runs our, our uh, marketing department. Um, she said that she thinks the place for AI is still in ideation. And I agree with that. So if you're looking for ideas, if you're looking to brainstorm or, you know, have a computer kind of sit there and, and, and be your, your co-writer, um, your writing buddy, that's fine. But I'd be really careful about using AI-generated content for um, titles and descriptions, uh, A, and then B, for landing page copy. So, you know, you might have read this and said like, oh, it's okay, I'm not doing anything organic, I'm only going paid. The, the organic rules are applying to paid with Performance Max specifically. Um, and that's only going to get more and more true. Uh, Performance Max is a full funnel mechanism that uses your content in order to help take prospects from the top of the funnel down to the bottom of the funnel. And the fact that there's such a strong emphasis on content means that Google is crawling your content um, in order to determine what it is and, and how valuable it is. And so if there's a rule that applies organically, I would just assume that it applies for paid. So I'd caution you uh, strongly against using AI uh, uh, copy creators, which sucks because they're awesome. My favorite was Jarvis, which they changed the name. I don't know why they did that. I wonder if Marvel sued them. Um, but the thing, what it created was, it was unbelievable. Like it was so intuitive and, um, no, I'm not going to be able to, whatever. Um, you can play with it if you want to. There, I, I'm not telling you not to use these things because there's still a ton of um, really solid value, I think, that you could mine uh, out of a utility like this one. AppSumo had a bunch of deals, too. I don't think we bought any of them. But uh, if Google's going to penalize you for the utilization of AI content, then assume that it's across both organic and paid verticals. And if that's the case, then just don't use it. Again, you can use it for ideation. It can be your starting point. But I wouldn't... I wouldn't put that content anywhere that you want Google to play nicely with uh, just because they, 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 you know, paint with a really broad brush. Um, so anyway, for whatever it's worth, be careful of AI driven content. Uh, I'd love to know what y'all think about this, by the way. Were you using AI content, uh, AI generated content? If so, how were you using it? And how big of a pain is this going to be? If not, I'd be interested in why you never hopped on the bandwagon because that was tempting. Um, we played with it a ton. I was never able to get it to a point to where it was like actually writing blog articles for us, which is what other people were doing. But um, I, I really liked the brainstorming that it provided. The other thing that I also really liked, it was a hack that came from Perry Belcher. Um, Perry said, you have to speak to people on a seventh grade level, which is hard because we all have the curse of expertise. And so you could plug your content into Jarvis and and dictate the reading level. And so it would, it would dumb it down for lack of a better term. Um, you can still do that. You can still, that's actually a really good example. You can use something like Jarvis in order to modify the reading level of your copy, but then I would rewrite it as a human uh, just to make sure you don't piss off the Google bot. 
and uh, I, I'd be I'd be hesitant to think that Google's not going to be able to see through this, even with short form text. You know, you might say, "Hey, ninety character headline or description." Like, how could how could they possibly? I don't know. Um, but I've been burned enough by Google, and they've seen through enough of my shenanigans to where I'm just like, uh, I play by the rules where heavy penalization is concerned, and I think you should too. That's all I got. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, before you go, I'm constantly looking for amazing people to come join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you're passionate about customer success, please go to solate.com forward slash apply, and we'd love to see you as a part of the Solutions 8 team. Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube algorithm know that we actually know what we're doing. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We shoot a video every single day, and I don't want you to miss out on any of it. Lastly, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confessions, or you just hate my face and my voice, go ahead and hit us up in the comments. We get very little human interaction, and even the heckling is something that I kind of get a kick out. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being subscribers if you're a subscriber. Don't forget to apply if you're interested in working at Solutions 8. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow.